Welcome to Making a Form in Google, presented by the Illinois State Organization of Delta Kappa Gamma. Um, please um, know that you have two things that you should be doing um, to participate in this. If you want to participate by making a form, if you just want to listen, that's going to be an option too. Um, but my name is Jean. My last name is Talene. Um, I'm here to help you help you get everything you wanted to know about making a Google form, and I hope you find it um, very easy. I will tell you that when I first made my first one, probably I don't know five, six, seven years ago, I was lost. Um, I do think they've changed it, so it's made it a whole lot easier. And we're going to start then with the picture um, because I'm sharing my screen with you, and I'd like you to see that this is some suggestions for the ways a form could help you collect information. So the obvious one is contact information. You've got a group of people and you'd like to get their contact information all in one place. So you choose that I wanna make a contact information list. Um, RSVPs, party invites, t-shirt sign up. You'll put in the number, the choices of sizes and everybody will pick their size. Um, event registration. Um, we did use this um, when we did the online registration form for um, during COVID for the um, uh, Illinois State Organization Convention um, back then. Um, it was a lifesaver for us. Um, notice there's find a time, RSVP, party invite. The last one in the bottom row is class quiz. Normally, when you go to the template options, which I'm gonna show you where those are, you do not see class quiz. Class quiz, try to say that fast. Class quiz is a separate option and I'll show you where that is. You do see blank. This is one way to start with a blank form. This is not the way I would choose because this is an extra step, but I wanted you to see what are some of your options um, when you wanna make a form. Um, so if you want to make, a find a time form, then I don't suggest that you start with a blank. Why would you do that? Go to the template option, which I'll show you where that is in just a minute and choose find a time. And then you can edit those questions on that form to be what you want it to be. But at least you don't have to start from scratch. Um, I'm a big believer in if somebody's already started it, then why on earth should you start over? So uh, again, keep that in mind. Um, th these are your options. There is a place to see everything you're seeing on the screen as far as choices. Um, and I'm gonna show you where that is, but I wanted to start here. Okay, a couple more things. Keep in mind that currently you should be signing in to your Google account so that you are ready to go when um, I get done going through a few things. So the next thing is the agenda. Um, you should be getting started, sign in. So when you sign in, um, you will um, be um, ready to go. Um, this needs to be changed before I do this uh, for real. Ignore the second word, sign in. Um, I was thinking that I was going to have you sign in um, to a Google form so that we could track who um, has come to the um, webinar. But um, we've decided we don't need to do that. And I didn't update it before we started. So um, you're going to sign into Google period, and you're already in the Zoom session, or you're watching this um, on a video um, that you found on our Facebook page. So those are your options, but you only have to sign in once, sign into your Google account. You do have to have a Google account. You cannot make a Google form without a Google account. Um, when you look at our Facebook page and when you found this video, there's also a link there for the handout. And I encourage you to download that handout and print it out. Um, it is um, a very, very, I think, not because I made it, but I try to make them so they follow what we've done in the um, webinar, but yet um, you have something concrete and pictures to look at. And I'll refer to page numbers in that handout um, as we go through this video. Um, keep in mind that because you're watching it as a recording, you'll be able to pause it, um, take some steps in your Google form, come back, rewind it, look, read over again, listen to it over again, watch it over again so that um, you can get full benefit from the directions that are here um, in the video and also repeated most of them on the handout. 
So once you've done those things, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the format of what you see when you get ready to make a Google form. We're going to add questions to your Google form. There are, I can't remember, seven or eight types of questions. A couple of them are really fun. Um, we're going to preview the finished form and we'll do that several times throughout um, this video so that you can see your finished product and see why you had to type in what you had to type in in the question so that it shows up correctly on the form. Um, there are some follow-up things that you need to know about that are options. I'm not gonna throw those at you at the beginning, but once you've been through the process um, or at least watched through the process, um, then you'll know um, what um, you need to do um, or what your options are. And then finally, how do you share it with those people that you would like to respond to your form? Um, it's a pretty easy process. And, and as I mentioned earlier in the beginning, that was probably one of the hardest things was how to get it so that you can share it with responders. And then lastly, view the results. Once you've had some responses, how do you go about doing that? So that's what we're going to cover in this video. Now, a couple of things. I will be sharing my screen, not through the entire process. I'm gonna switch between, um, but I'll be walking you through steps. Um, and then if you have a choice, you could take your Zoom window, make it half of um, the screen so that you can watch what I'm showing you. And you can have your Google um, window on the other half of your screen and, and watch, um, work there while you watch the video. Um, another option would be to have um, the Zoom session on your phone or an iPad, um, Chromebook, whatever, and work on your computer and view it on the other device. Um, that's a real nice way to do that. Um, I do that when I watch webinars as well, if I've got something I wanna try while they're talking. Um, another option would be simply to watch the Zoom and then practice later using the handout as a guide. It's a step-by-step, -step, so it's pretty much gonna be what I do in the um, video here today. And then the other option um, would be to have full windows, minimize your Google window while you're watching the video, and then open your Google window, do some work, minimize the Google window so you can see what I'm doing on the Zoom, and then, um, reopen the Google window. So that's an option. And I will stop um, periodically for questions. Um, so um, there are quite a few steps. I'm, there are a couple that I may not stop after just because they're more knowledge than they are um, things to do, um, but that's how that will work. And if you wanna have paper um, or if you've, if you're viewing this, then you also had the opportunity to download the handout at the same time. And if you have a printer, you might want to print that handout um, so that you can make notes because we literally are going to follow that handout step by step. You don't need the handout, um, but some of us are visual learners and we like to have that picture um, for later reference. Okay, so that was getting started. So now I'm going to get out of that and I'm going to open my Google Drive. So when you open Google, I need to get back to the beginning here. When you open Google, it should look like this. Uh, unless you've got a direct link, you'll notice that I have a direct link to my inbox here. <clears throat> I have a direct link to Google search here and another one to Google images here. Um, those are all up here on the corner. And so this is where we're going to start. You're on the homepage of Google and uh, you need to see some things that are there. Obviously we're all familiar with the search box. Even if you use another company's browser, they all give us a search box. So there it is. Um, I can get to my Gmail account here. Um, I'll, I'll mention that none of these icons that you see across the bottom, none of those were there to start with, but the more often I go to my inbox or to SMART, some of you know that I'm a SMART certified trainer and, and I do that for schools um, through a company in Peoria. Um, the more I do that, the more those show up along the bottom. 
Um, if I search Google images too often, which I do, um, I'm not meaning too often, but I do search, it starts to show up here. So you may have some of those as well. But if I didn't have those, I could go to my Gmail account here. If I wanted to search images rather than just search, um, I could narrow it that focus. Um, this is um, Google Labs, which I've never been to. Um, I don't um, never taught anything that had to do with labs. So um, I'll let you investigate that if you have never. And then finally, this is where we wanna be. Um, this little matrix, three rows, three columns, um, is referred to by some as a waffle. And that's the word I use in the handout, kind of looks like a waffle. Um, and that's where we're going to find Google Drive. So when you go to that with your cursor, you can see my cursor is over the top and I click it with my mouse. You have a window with your options in Google. There are lots of them, lots of them. And you can move these wherever you want. So I'm gonna click on my Gmail and I'm gonna drag it. And I can drag it and reorganize these however you want, just like you can on your home screen of your computer. So I, early on, put my Google Drive in the top right corner. Yours may be somewhere else and you will need to look down through this list, but you're looking for the Google Drive icon. It looks like a colorful triangle of colors and it says Drive underneath. Once you find it, you're going to click that once and your Google Drive will open. I'll be honest, I don't use my Google Drive much except that I travel and, for work and I have some things that I want to make available to myself whether I'm at home or on the road. So those are the kind of things I keep there. Um, I also have put a copy of the handout. Here it is right here. Um, I've put a copy of the handout in this Delta Kappa Gamma folder um, under um, the Communications and Publicity Committee for 2325. Um, and that handout then is a link that you will um, have on the Facebook page and it will be linked directly to that. You can download it. It's a PDF file, so you don't have to have special software. Um, you can print it out as you wish. But we aren't gonna do anything with that um, right now. Um, we're going to go up here in the upper corner to the new button. And when you click that new button, you get a menu. Um, all of these pictures that I'm showing you are in the handout. Um, so you don't have to take screenshots or anything. If you've got the handout already, you've noticed that. When you click on new and you get this menu, you will notice that Google Forms is down here in the fourth one. Literally, my mouse is on the words Google Forms. And if I were to click that right now, a blank Google form would open up. That is the fastest way to get a blank Google form. However, if I slide my mouse over to the little arrow, notice I didn't click. The minute I slid my mouse onto that arrow, I get three options. Do I want a blank form? Do I want a blank quiz? Now, what's the difference? Well, um, if you've been in education, most of us have, there's always a time when we want a corrected answer. We want the students to know what the correct answer is. And so in the form, there are no correct answers. You're simply collecting information. But in a blank quiz, it's set up so that you can assign point values. You can tell it which one is the correct one. So it's literally got some kind of grading going on when the answers are submitted. And then finally, from a template. And that's the picture I shared with you at the beginning of this um, video. Uh, when you click there, I'll just do it real quick. You don't need to do it, you already saw it. There they are. You pick RSVP, you pick find a timeline. Notice the quiz is not here. I put that picture in so that you could have that as a reminder. I'm going back to my Google Drive. And when I go back to new and I click go to Google form, I can either click here to get a blank form or I can go here to get a blank form. If you want to use one of the templates or you wanna do the blank quiz, after this webinar, you will have all the skills you need to edit and change the blank quiz, add questions to it, go to the template, make modifications to the template. So I'm gonna click on blank form. I, again, I can do it here or I can go here where it says Google Forms. All right, so um, when you uh, go to um, your handout, 
Um, we are now on page two of the handout. Um, the front page of the handout does not have um, a page number. It's simply the overlay page. Um, and then going forward, um, the handout is numbered pages one, two, three, four. And I'll refer to those every once in a while in case you want to um, refer to those pages. But please note that I have put um, reminders in the handout of which topics appear on which pages as well. All right, so we're gonna start in the upper left corner. You will notice that it says untitled form. It also says untitled form in the title. I could go up here, I could click. I am not going to erase that. There is no need for you to erase that. The minute that is highlighted on a computer, the minute I start typing and I call form practice, That's the title. And notice what happens when I move off of it. It transfers that title to the title of my form. If I had typed in here on the form itself, it would have converted it up here as well. Those two are linked. And the minute you put a title in one, it shows up in the other, okay? Right next to the title up here in the upper left corner, we now have a folder. Before I titled it, it wouldn't let me do this. But now that I have a folder, I could click here and you will notice that it is lo lo loading all the um, folders that are in my DKG folder. How did it know I wanted to be in the DKG folder? Well, you might remember that when I was back here, I clicked on the DKG folder and opened it. Notice at the top, it's open. And so it knows that I'm working in the DKG folder. But what if I would like to add this to the communications and publicity folder that I have right here? I can click that and I can go over here and I can say, move it here. So now when I want it, that's where it is. All right. You'll notice it's not going to stay there, so it's going to go away, but it says the form practice has been moved from DKG to the communications and publicity folder. And I can undo that if I want. I don't want to because I want to be able to find it going forward. So I know now it's in the folder I want. Don't hesitate to make a folder ahead of time that you'd like to collect your forms in. If it's your chapter, make a chapter form. Make a name for the committee that the form is for or the year that it's for or something so that you can find these forms. There's nothing worse than looking through 100 files, and not being able to figure out which one it is. Next to that is a star. I could start if I want. I'll be honest, I don't star much. Um, I would end up with a whole bunch of things starred and still have to go looking for them. You can, however, search, search for starred items in your Google Drive. And if you've only got a few of them, so use those stars judiciously. As with all Google products, all changes are saved as you do them, as long as you are online, okay? In the middle, we have questions and we are in question mode where we're going to be adding questions to our form. If you come back to this and you still wanna add more questions or you wanna edit questions, you will need to be in the questions tab. However, if I go over here to responses, I have no responses. But going forward, once you shared this form with participants and they start submitting responses, that's where you'll need to go to see your responses. So you have to be in the questions to make and edit questions. You do not wanna edit questions after you've started getting responses. So make sure it's right before you start. Then go to responses and see responses. There are some options there. We'll talk about that later. Um, in your handout, I point out to you that um, you can review, there is a section in the handout that reviews um, responses um, on page 10. Um, the whole page 10 is about how do you deal with responses. And then the last tab is settings. In your handout on page seven, um, item number 18 is about settings and how to make changes to your form. Google has set your settings to be what most people want. And in special situations, there are settings that you might like to use on a regular basis. Keep in mind, if you make any changes to the settings, all 
forms you make in the future from that point on will use those settings. So be thinking about whether you really want those settings going forward or not. They're called the default settings. Okay. All right. And then finally, we're going to go back to questions because that's where we want to spend the first part of our time today. Up in the upper right corner are some more icons, lots of icons, and the handout does cover those for you. So the first one is a palette, and that's where you can customize your theme. You can give it color, you can change the font, you can change sizes, and so forth. By default, I'm okay with what they've given me, so I'm not going to change anything right now, but we will view that later um, on page eight. The eyeball, um, is for previewing the form, and we're going to use that regularly. Notice when I move my mouse close to that, it tells me what it is. So you don't have to remember or refer to the handout every time you want to remember. The next two should be familiar to all of us, undo and redo. We love those when we want to undo something or redo something. Next one is send. If you want to send your form out to participants from here, you may do that. There are a couple ways to do that, and we'll talk about that. Um, that's on page nine of your handout. Finally, we have three dots, and many in the computer industry use three dots. Um, you know, three dots is et cetera, uh, dot, 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 meaning more options, and there are more options here. Um, this menu does appear in your handout, and we'll talk about that later. And then finally, this is my avatar um, that I use to tell me I don't, I use, this is my personal email account and my personal Google Drive. Um, I have several more email accounts uh, in Google. And so I have different avatars for all of them and I'm a Cub fan. So that was a good one to use. All right, so what have we got here? Well, um, you will notice that there is a blue bar along the left side. That blue bar indicates that that is the part of your form you're editing now. Notice if I click below that, now I'm in that question to edit. So the blue bar indicates where you're able to um, change things and where you're not active. And right now my question number one is not active, okay? You get this little bar along each question and all of the options here apply to that space only. When I go to the next question, I get a bar. It's identical to the previous, but it only goes for that question. So you, they give you a bar to use. Now you will notice that the add question button, which is the first one is here. It's important to know that when you add a question, it always goes in place immediately following the space you are now on. So since I'm on the title box, if I were to add a question, it would bump in between the question that's already there and the title. I'm not going to do that, but that's how that works. So if I go here to second the question, then when I were to click plus, I would get the next question below this one. And we're going to do that in a little bit. So just think about that for a minute. The next question, I'm sorry, the next option is about importing questions. And that's a whole nother thing. Um, I don't know how much this happens now, but there are um, a lot of textbook companies that put out data uh, test banks and you can import those questions if you would like, or maybe you have questions that you've already typed up and you'd like to import them, um, especially if you're doing a quiz for a class, that's possible. Um, you can either contact me for that. I'm not gonna go into that. That's a very detailed practice. Um, the questions have to be in a certain format and um, I can help you with that. Uh, you can also do this, go to Google, type in, how do I import questions into a Google form? And you will get all sorts of help in, and, and actually a guide to tell you how they should be formatted in the original um, document in order to import them. Um, but that's what that is, importing questions. Uh, the next one is adding a title and description. So if you'd like to have a title, let's say that you're going to have um, uh, three questions um, about um, a social studies chapter on this particular form. You could put a title and say, um, you know, chapter five, 
you know, pages such and such through such and such. That's your title. And then you could put a description um, to remind yourself and your students that the next five questions are about what we've studied um, in the last several days, whatever you want to put in that description. I don't want a title on this question. And keep in mind, you would title every question. You would probably put a title at the first question in a section and then say, okay, the next five questions are going to be from that story or um, from that you know, maybe these are add questions, addition questions. And then the, excuse me, the next questions will be, you know, about subtraction or they're going to be about another story. So you have that option. Um, we're going to put a description up there in the title, but we're not going to put a title here. Um, I'll show you how it's done up above and then you could just click. I will show you that when I click it, you will notice um, that it adds a title. Um, and so I could add a title before adding a new question. Or um, if I want this, ti this title to be above question one, I could click, notice I'm grabbing that little, little tiny waffle at the top of the question and I could grab it up here and bring it, okay? So I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna trash that, but that is an option to put a title on the section before you put some questions in that group. Um, so I'm just going to trash that. Notice the trash can. All right. So we're going to go back up here to the top and we're going to put something in this description. And you certainly can put what you'd like to put uh, if you're practicing along with me. I'm going to say um, the question types below. Are. Google <laughs> Google Forms questions. Questions. Okay. And it helps if you spell forms right. There is spell check. That's a great thing. And so it lets me spell check that way. Below that are um, uh, formatting options. Um, I have to highlight whatever I'm formatting. So I'm going to highlight the whole line and I'm going to click bold. But let's say that I only want to for I only want to um, italic or underline Google Forms. And so I highlight what I need to do. You can add a bulleted list. Um, you can add a numbered list. This is numbered. This is bulleted. You can add a link. So let's say that you're going to put five questions about a website that you want your members or your students to go to before um, they answer the questions. So you could paste a link in there with the directions to go to that link and then answer the following questions. You could do the same that with students on a quiz. You could say, you know, go to this link and it could be to a YouTube video. It could be to a um, website and ask them to answer some questions and they could you know, obviously, if they come back here and answer questions, they could then hit that link again, or they could just use their tabs on their browser to switch between whatever you had them go to and then come back to this form. So a real quick way to do that. If I decide I don't want bold, I could click on the B and the bold will go away. My underlining is still there. Uh, my bold didn't go away. There we go. Now my bold is gone. But my other option is to highlight all of that and bold it. And I'll tell you why the bold only went away on Google Forms. That's because that's what I had highlighted. So if you highlight that, now it's all bold again. And if I wanted to get rid of all formatting and I don't want to click on each one, and you know, let's say I had italicized something. Um, let's say I had said these types of questions below and I had italicized the word below. Um, and now I've got bold, I've got italics, I've got underlined, and I wanna get rid of all of it. This last one will immediately remove all formatting. So I'm gonna do that and get rid of my formatting. And now, uh, don't ask me why it didn't do that, but I'm going to try it again. There we go. Now, is it all gone? Yes. And now I could, I'm just going to highlight the whole thing and only bold it. Um, these buttons are what we call toggles. If I toggle it on 
and then toggle it off. It's an on off switch and you click it once to put it on and again to turn it off. All right, so that's a little bit about the icons that you see there. I didn't mention the rest of these. This one is to add a picture. So if I wanted to put a logo or something um, up here in this um, direction, I could do that. Maybe I wanna put a picture of the textbook that I want them to use um, or a picture from the website that they're going to be going to. However, you could do that. This is a video link. So if you wanted them to watch, have a direct link to a video, you could put it up there first. And then finally, the last one is to add sections. Um, we used this option um, when I was the registrar for our state convention um, during the pandemic. Um, I made sections and we wanted one section only to be completed by um, state executive board members, chapter presidents and the officers that form the executive board of the state. Um, we um, made sections so that someone who wasn't an executive board member would just fill out the first part and then they only needed to go on to section two if they were an executive board member. So that was a real nice way to separate those. You could do it um, by um, lessons and have a quiz um, that you have students a link to for them and they go in and they do the first half of the quiz um, today and then tomorrow they come back and do the second half and you can make a section bar so that you can say, hey, stop here. If you haven't um, done such and such, um, you haven't read the, the assignment for tomorrow, then you know don't, don't go beyond here. Um, of course, that wouldn't really work on a quiz because you wouldn't want them to know what the next quiz questions are, but, but you get the idea that it's meant as a um, way to separate on the same form into, into pieces. All right, so we now are gonna focus on our question. Please notice that when I click the question, it is now active. It has the blue um, bar on the left side and I'm now ready. By default, when you add a question, you always get multiple choice. And that's so that you can, uh, I think probably Google did some surveying and found out that most, a lot of quiz questions or practice questions on a, on a form are multiple choice. So. That's what they give you automatically. But this little triangle here lets us choose other types of questions. And we're going to go through um, most of those types, okay? So I just clicked off in space so that that list is gone. We'll come back to that. This little icon here lets me add an image as does this little icon here, which is identical. Use either one of those to add an image. We're going to do that on a question in a minute. All right. so. Step one is to type your question. If you'd like it to be bold, then you want to click bold. If you want it italic or underline, you only have to underline, sorry, you only have to highlight the part that you want to be italic or underline. Okay, again, you can add a link and you can remove all formatting. Same options that we had up above. All right. So on the next one, we're going to type our question. So. Remember, you don't have to delete that. I'm simply going to start typing. And um, my question is going to be, what chapter or state organization are you a member of? of, of. <laughs> now, if you're a chapter member of Illinois, you don't need to say anything about Illinois, but if you're not a chapter member of Illinois, then you just need to tell me your state. I need to put that in a direction. So I'm going to go down here to these little three dots. These little three dots give me other options. And in that option, there's an option to put a description. Just like I put a description up there in the title, I'm going to put a, a, uh, some description here. And I want to say, if you are an Illinois state member, no need to, oh, I'm, now I'm going to say, just, just name your chapter. 
if you are not a DKG member, choose other. Okay, so, uh, and for some reason, it sometimes it changes it to short answer. It's trying to outguess me. Um, and so I'm going to change this back to multiple choice. Okay. All right. So multiple choice. Um, oh, my question's not going to work. Let's do this because I don't want. What state organization? Uh, I'll be honest. The question that I chose earlier, I forgot. So I was, what I was going to do mentally, I forgot. So I was just going to make something up. And now when you do things on the fly, it doesn't always work. What state organization are you a member of? So I'm going to say, um, if your state, whoops, state is not listed, choose other. If you are not a DKG member, choose NA. All right, so we're gonna put Illinois here, whoops. We're gonna put Louisiana here. We're going to put Georgia here and we're going to put not applicable here and we're going to put other here okay now you will notice that it gives me an option to add another option after that and i could certainly do that the x's on the right allow me to delete one quickly and you'll notice that when i went to the line on illinois i could add um, a map of illinois or i could add um, our current um, emblem um, from our um, state president. Um, I'm not going to do that. We'll add a picture a little bit later. The process is the same as long as you know where you want to put it. So I have my question done. I've given a little bit of a description. Um, notice, please, that I have a trash can. If I want to trash the whole thing and start over, I could do that. I could make it required, and I am going to make it required. What else do we have? Well, we have another icon at the bottom and it says duplicate. Now, I may not want to answer this. I obviously don't want to ask the same question twice, but maybe I want this format. I want it to be multiple choice. I want to put some question online on the question line. Uh, maybe I will or may not keep the description. Notice I could make the description go away. Well, I'll show you how to do that in a minute because I don't want it to go away. I have choices over here. Um, these are circles. And in the computer world, a circle is called a radio button. And that radio button can only be checked once. If I check Illinois, I can't check any of the others. If I check Georgia and then go back to Illinois, it will turn off Georgia and go and go to Illinois. And I'm going to demonstrate that when we preview this in a few minutes. But circles are single answer questions. Multiple choice means there are many choices, but there is only one answer. Okay. All right. So that's question type number one. Question type number two. I'm just making sure that I've covered everything I have. So now we're going to do question number two. That would mean I have to remind myself of what question number two is. There it is. All right. So we're going to go up here to the add and we're going to add a question. The question, remember, is always added following the question you're on. So I click and now I have a new question here. Okay. It always comes in as multiple choice. Select that arrow beside the multiple choice and click short answer. So our short answer question is going to be name 
the DKG International President. And of course, short answer on this line. I would like that to be bold, so I'm going to click the B in bold. And we're going to add a picture. And the process for doing that, number one, your picture should be saved on your computer that you want to bring in. So I'm going to click on this. And I can either open up the folder and drag it in, or I can browse my computer and find it. I can also go look in my Google Drive. I can go look in Google Images. I can go to a webcam and snap a shot. I can go type in a web address and it will take me to that picture. Or I can go to my photos on my computer. I have it in a folder because I saved it earlier and it's right there. And I hope I'm going to do this fast enough that you don't see the name. I apologize to our state, our international president. I only found this picture once on the international website as part of a video. And uh, she's not quite smiling as much as I know she does, but um, just so that you saw how to put in a picture. So thank you, Debbie, for letting me um, help everybody see how you do a picture. You will notice that there are three dots on the picture. And if I click those, there's more options. I can center the design, uh, the picture. I can um, click it again and I can change the picture or I can remove the picture or I could add a caption. Um, or I could right align it if I'd like. I'm gonna put it back to left align. And uh, I'm not gonna make this required, but you can see that um, the question is complete. Uh, I'm gonna go on to um, a new question. And this time we're going to do, notice it came in as multiple choice. We're going to do check boxes right below multiple choice. I'm not gonna do paragraph, Paragraph is just like short answer, only it gives a bigger space for the response so that the responder can type in a paragraph. So keep that in mind. If you have a long answer that won't fit on a line, then you'll want to do a paragraph. Um, so um, I'm not gonna take your time to do that. It's pretty simple to understand that option, okay? So we're gonna do check boxes. Now, if you recall what it looked like when we started question one, we had a single option and then add another. We have the same thing here. The basic difference is that we have a box instead of a circle. A box can be answered multiple answers. So it's multiple choice, but multiple answers can be selected. So our question is going to be, choose the states that border Illinois. And I'm going to add, remember how I did that, I'm going to click here under more options and I'm gonna click description. I want a description here because I want to say, choose as, choose all correct options in the list. So our first option is going to be Iowa and our next one's going to be um, Georgia and the next one's going to be Kentucky and the next one's going to be um, Indiana and the last one's going to be Wisconsin. And we're not gonna choose an other. Again, notice the check boxes out or the X's out to the side to remove them quickly. Rather than having to change, you could just click the X. You're just now making it onto my video, dear. <laughs> you can click the image. <laughs> And we're not gonna add other cause uh, you could, but we're not going to. Um, so the respondent can um, choose as many options that are correct.
Okay, going forward, the next thing we're going to do, um, we're going to step aside from the questions. We're going to go up here to the um, I um, in the upper right corner, and we're going to see what it looks like. So here is what the form will look like when it's sent out to others. You will notice that it lists my email address that I would be responding from. Uh, if I want to switch to a different account, I could do that and I could respond from a different account than the one which um, I'm signed in um, to um, Google with. Um, it is not being shared as of now. However, if in my settings, I choose that I want to share, I want to collect email addresses, then that email address will be collected by the form. So keep that in mind um, when you're putting in um, your choices. All right, so you'll notice here's my radio buttons. And when I click Illinois, um, and then I click Georgia, and then I click NA, it only lets me choose one of those. It will not let me choose others. And you will notice that when I click other, I do get the option to complete um, a name of another state um, that I'm an organization member of. Also notice that up here, there is a red asterisk, and that means this is a required question. Okay, I'm gonna choose this one. Not that I'm going to submit this. Um, we're going to um, click go at number two. You would just, as a user, type in your answer. And, um, you would um, move on to the next question. And then finally, choose the states that border Illinois. Notice you can click Iowa, you can click Georgia, you can click Kentucky, you can click Indiana. How, what if I click one I don't want checked? Oh, I go back to it and I click again and it's unchecked. Again, it's a toggle. Click it once and then click it twice and it turns off. Um, all right, so we are not going, I can clear the form also. I'm going to leave this and, and I'm going to close this form. Now, notice please at my top, here is the form I've been working on where I'm building my form. This is the one that popped up when I said I wanted to see a preview. I'm going to turn that, I'm going to cancel that one because I wanna go back to this one. And unfortunately it does not, um, you do not get the option to um, update it. When you add more questions in your preview, it doesn't show up, okay? So we're just gonna move on here and do some more questions. So I'm gonna click the plus sign. And now we're going to add the next question we're going to add and you will notice that we've done short answer. We're not doing paragraph. We've done multiple choice. We've done check boxes and we've done drop. Oh, we've done check boxes and multiple choice, which are those two. Now we're gonna do a drop down. Um, in, it takes a little bit of thought about when you would wanna do a drop down list. In my mind, a drop down is nothing more than multiple choice, but you're giving some hints along, instead of making them check circles, you're having them pick from a list and they're really the same kind of question. So you just have to decide. It is a, a space saver. If you have a drop down list, then the question doesn't take up so much space, but we're not printing this out. So it's not really a difference, but I'll just leave it up to you when you do that. I have, however, um, when I made the handout, I decided that I would um, give you pictures of these types of questions. I didn't give you a picture of the checkbox. I didn't give you a picture of the finished radio button. I didn't give you a picture um, of the um, short answer, but I did give you a picture of this one and the next three or four, because I thought maybe it might be helpful um, to see how they look in the finished product. So we're gonna do a drop down, And in this drop dropdown, um, we're going to do a math problem. So the math problem I chose to do is 35 plus, 21 equals and question mark. So 
I'm going to highlight this and click bold. I just like them because they stand out a little bit. And now I'm going to go down here and it asked me to put in my first option for an answer. So we're going to put in um, 54 and 55 and 56 and 57. Um, I'm not going to add any others. Um, it's done. And that's how I want it. Now, what if I wanted to do a lot of those? I could hit duplicate. I'm going to do that. I'm not going to fill it in again, but I'm going to hit duplicate. Now, what would be a time saver here? Well, let's say I already have those answers, but what if I change one of the problems to um, 33 plus 21? I don't have to change my answers. They're all there. And you could certainly be more creative in your answer choices, you know, 19, 25, 37, 57, and then make questions, but you could keep the same answers over and over. It's up to you. But I wanted you to see how, how you edit. I got the new question. I made a change. Now I have two questions. I didn't have to do a lot of work to do that. Um, I'm not going to keep that one in my list, but I did want you to see how that could be done. So I'm going to delete that one. And now I'm back to my single. I am going to require that this one be answered again so that you can see how that works. All right, we're going to add a new question. And our next question is going to be of the question type linear scale. I love this question. Of course, part of it's because the question. I'll be honest. When I was first learning to do this, I was like, what can I use for a linear scale question? So what do we do when we don't know what to do? We go to Google and we say, what are some linear scale questions in Google Forms? And they'll bring up some samples. Um, so that's what I did. And that meant that um, we had um, a question to come up with. So I came up with this one. Um, it is rate, whoops rate your your feeling feelings about ice cream and notice it gives me choices of one to five i can change the one my low end to zero or one i can make it zero let's make it zero and that would be for those who have no interest in ice cream. And I can go as high as 10. I'm gonna leave it at five. And now what labels do we want? On the zero end, um, we will go um, never want it. And next one, I love it. And there's my linear scale, okay? Now um, we're gonna go to the view, preview button. I'm going to close that tab that I had earlier and I'm gonna go up here and open a new one because it doesn't update. So it does keep my answers because it's got my email address X there and so it does keep my answers. Notice I have an asterisk on the addition question. When I go to choose and hit the arrow, um, you have the four answered choices that I gave and you would pick the one you want. And again, it does save space. Shows my answer. If I want, I can go back and change it until I submit. Here's my ratings question. Never want it, that's a zero. Love it, that's a five. Anywhere in the middle, somewhere um, between those two feelings. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go up here and we're going to delete um, that. Well, I'm going to leave that so you can see that it doesn't update. We're going to add a new question. We're, I'm back to my tab, which is the questions. And this time we're going to go to multiple choice and we're going to choose right below any linear scale. We're going to choose multiple choice grid. And to get some ideas, I did have to go look it up. And so this is going to be my multiple choice grid. Um, again, there is a picture in the handout and it is this, rate each team's chances of winning 
the Super Bowl. And again, I'm going to highlight that and hold it. Um, there is a way you can avoid that, and, and uh, I think, and I'll explain it as we get a little farther on in the extras. So in the rows, you're going to put the name of the teams. I'm just going to do a few here just so you get the idea and you can see it when we show you the question. Kansas City Chiefs and Dallas Cowboys and one more, New England Patriots. Whoops, and wouldn't have to be perfect there. What goes in the columns? Well, the columns are whatever you want them to use as your rating scale. One, two, three, four, five, whatever. I'm gonna use 0%. And I don't like to type, so I'm going to highlight that and copy it. And I'm gonna paste that into the next one. I want you to see what happens. You see that little red triangle there? It says duplicate options not supported. In other words, I can't have 0% twice and I don't want 0% twice. I actually want this to be 25. I just didn't wanna to have to keep typing that percent sign. So I'm going to do another one. And this one's going to be 50%. And here we're going to have 75 and I will take time to type it. And then the last one, of course, um, as you can guess is 100%. So we have options on the right side to delete any one of these. And so you can do that for sure. Um, we have options to add a description, so I'm gonna do that. Now let's look at this menu. This little menu in the lower corner of the question changes for the different types of questions. So you will notice that I still have description as an option and I'm going to do that. I can also limit one response per column. Now keep in mind what that means is, is that um, when I look at the columns, on the finished product, I can only answer one. And normally that's what a radio button is. And you'll see it when, when I show it to you. So I'll come back to that later, but let's do description. Um, I'm gonna say be sure, sure to rate each team, okay? All right, uh, we have one more to do and then you'll, we'll go look at um, our preview again. So our next one is going to be the last option in that group checkbox grid. What's the difference? Oh, by the way, there's what the question looks like. So when it said one option in each, if I limit it to one option in each corner, I can't make Chicago and Kansas City both zero. I would have to pick a different answer. If Chicago is zero, then the Chiefs have to be one of the other four options, can't be zero. I don't care. If you want to say everybody is a zero except New England, that's your choice. When And so you have to think that through when you're making a question. What are your options? What do you, what kind of results do you want? If you want every, each choice to be used once, then that's where you go to that lower corner and you say, I want the column to be limited to one. But if you don't care, then you let everybody in a column be the same. Keep in mind, however, for Chicago Bears, you only have one option. If you click zero, then you can't click any of the others. If you click 100, the zero will turn off. If you click 25, the zero will turn off. I'll mention this again when we get over to the actual question in the preview. All right, so the next question is checkboxes. If you recall, checkboxes allow you to click all sorts of answers um, and you're not limited to what you can say. So up here, we're going to put this question and it's going to say, um, check all times you were available to meet this week. Check all 
times you are available to meet this week. And I'm going to, in the first row, put Monday and Tuesday. I can't meet on Wednesday, so I'm not going to put that in. And Friday. And over here, I'm going to put my times. Uh, we're willing to meet at 7 p.m. Whoops. And I want a space in there. I don't know what's it. I'll have to have a language arts English teacher tell me. I don't know if you can, if that's needed. I know you're supposed to put periods. I don't like to put periods, so I don't. Everybody knows what p.m. is. Um, not proper, but anyway. All right. So I have four times that we could meet if you wanted other times, obviously. You can add a column and give more options, but in this particular one, um, I only want time option. Um, so there we are. Notice again, you have your options to delete the question. You have the option to um, duplicate the question and require this. This would be a required question because I need your answer. When can you meet? All right, so this is done and I'm happy with it. I don't see any misspellings. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click preview. Now, what I want you to notice is this is the preview I just did and it shows me all the questions that we've done. Here is the preview that I did a few minutes ago and you will notice that it stops at the ice cream question. So the preview does not update itself. You have to, um, Um, you have to just delete the old one because it will not update, all right? So here we are in our, whoops, that's the edit one. Here we are in what it looks like. And you'll notice how it's different at the top than it is in the other one. This part about my email address is not in the other one, all right? So here we are. Here's these last questions that we just put in. You'll notice when I click on zero and I go over here and say, oh no, 50 it takes it off. Chicago can only have one option. Kansas City can only, can they both have 50? Yes. But you once in the, by row, you only have one option. By column, you have multiple options unless you go into, and I'll go back over there. If you go back over here and you go here to this question and you go down to your choices. And if you choose limit one response per column, you're always limited to one response per row. But if you say, if you make that choice, limit one response per column, then I it would not let me put, it would switch and turn off the Chicago Bears at 50% and only let me do Dallas. So these are radio buttons and there are some restrictions. The automatic restriction is by row, one answer only per row. You can also choose to make only one answer per column. That brings us to the check boxes. You will notice that I can check multiples in the row. I can also check multiples in the columns. So that allows me, once I've filled in all the days, now I personally wouldn't like this. I would want a zero option for Friday or whatever day it is, because if I'm filling this out for somebody and they make me answer for all days, I may not be able to meet at all on Friday. And so I would want to have a not available. And you might want to say in your description, choose NA if you are not available that day. And I would want to add a column for that. I'm going to go back to my form and I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on this form and I'm going to add a column and I'm going to put not, I'm going to, but not A and A, but up here under, I'm going to go my little three dots and click on description. And I'm going to click NA equals, equals not available. Okay. So once again, I have my new question, but I cannot um, go view it in the other one because it's, um, right now it's hidden, but um, it's, 
I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click a new tab and there we are. And now I have not a as an option. And so I could click not available on Friday. And that means then that I wouldn't check anything on Friday because it's not, it's set up as a, because it has the red asterisk is required. And if it's required, it's going to make you answer something in every line unless, so you've got to give him an option in that line. Okay. All right, we are ready to do the last two questions. The last two questions are under same list. Oh, I got the question above the one that we just did. So I'm gonna force this to go below. And it takes a little bit, I found out. Come on. Let's move this one. We're gonna move this one up here. There we go. And now my new question is here. I need to activate it. My choice is date. And so you can set up a question and ask them what day can you meet? Whoops. What, what day? or what week for vacation or something can you meet? You can use this with family. And down here then it's asking for a month, day and year. Um, you can change that to time of day instead of date. And that's the other kind of question that's available. Just give me a time. What time can you meet on Wednesday? Um, and so that in the, in the drop down down here in the corner, you can ask for the year to be included or you can turn that off. Notice when I turn that off, it's no longer selected. We're assuming that it's this year. Um, you can ask them to include a time on this question. What date and time can you meet? And you can ask them to include a time. So there you are, that question. And if you chose, you could choose time instead and it would only ask for time. So you have that option. You don't have to ask for the date. You can just ask for the time. So those are the types of questions that are available to you um, in Google Forms. And certainly it's a wide array and it allows you a great option for that. Okay. Now, um, in your handout on page seven, that's where we start talking about other things. And I just want to tell you that at the top of page seven, under number item number 15, I have covered all the options down here in all the boxes. So it's listing that you can do a description on every question. On the time question, you can either, on the date question, you can include time or include year. Um, I've gone through all questions and listed what's available. Here is, um, this is that checkbox um, question. And I have listed that you, can ask for a response validation and you can shuffle the order of those state names in your options. So I'll let you look at those, but that's on the top of page seven. Um, again, I've already mentioned this, number eight, number 16, if you want to move a question, you grab these three dots and you move it up or down. Um, it takes a little bit of thinking. Um, you see how I did that real quickly? Now I'll tell you that I moved it back down. So you have that option, okay? Um, number 17, again, if there's a need for a section, you would go here. Um, let's say that I want a section immediately following um, this question. And so I click here and now I have a section title and this is section two um, as opposed to the beginning. I don't, I don't want that, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Um, how do I get rid of it? Well, I can either move it or I can delete it or I can duplicate it um, or I can merge it above. And I'm just going to delete that section. Um, I don't wanna delete the questions. Um, it says to preserve the questions, instead merge, choose the merge option. So I'm gonna say cancel. So I'm gonna go here and instead of clue, because if I delete the section, it'll take the question. So I'm going to merge with above. So it's going to take out the section break and just put those questions back together. Number 18, 
I mentioned this at the very beginning. There is a settings here and we're gonna look at those. So now that you've done a, a, a form, notice you can make this a quiz. At the last minute, you decided to make it a quiz and notice what you can do when you make a quiz. You can assign point values, set what are the right answers and automatically provide feedback. In other words, if they choose a wrong answer, you can say, hey, wrong, I need you to go to page such and such and look this up. Um, if, or you, if they choose the right answer, you can say, great, um, thanks for studying or something. So that's an option. But keep in mind, if you choose the quiz option at the very beginning, those will already be options in your quiz. Here, manage how the responses are collected and protected. And notice the choices. Um, do you wanna collect an email address? I referred to that earlier. And right now it's on do not collect, but if you want to collect an email address from every responder, then um, you check, you change this and it will collect that. It will also verify that it's an actual, <laughs> actual email address. All right, going forward. In other words, it'll check to see that there's an at sign and that it has the right ending, you know, like dot in gmail.com or whatever. Um, keep in mind, if you change any of these, every form that you do going forward will use these same settings. These are saved by Google and are used. Notice require, um, it requires a sign on, uh, a sign in with an email address, limit one response. They've got to know who signed in the first time and answered it so they can restrict them from doing it again. If they have another email address, they could use a different email address and do it a second time. Um, here is allow response editing. In other words, they get an option to go back and change their responses if they would like. And here you can send them a copy of their responses and that is turned off, but you can turn that on. It does require a collection of an email address because if you don't collect the email address, it doesn't know where to send those responses. And then finally, um, manage how the presentation is made. And some of those things, you can show a progress bar so they can see how much more they have to do. You can put the questions in shuffled automatically in order. You can send a confirmation message. I like to do that, that says your response has been received and you could even add more to it if you wanted. You can edit that message. Um, you can show a link to submit another, resp another response. Um, I like that one and that's, by, that's already turned on on mine by default. If I make a, a, um, a form that somebody's gonna use at one of our chapter meetings, then if we put that button in there, um, somebody else could come on to that same computer and enter their response and then somebody else could enter theirs and so you could just keep doing it. You could have 10 people get it all done at the meeting and not have to have them work at home. And that works well if you've got people that have limited internet or need some help with answering it. So consider putting that one as turned on. Um, you can sure share a summary with responders after the fact. Um, I'll let you um, think about that one if you wanna share results with all responders. It'll let them know how many answered each question and how they did it, especially when you're getting input after a meeting or something. And of course, um, it says disable autosave. And that is disabled right now. Um, it, I'm sorry, it's on, it, autosave is on right now. If you disable it, then um, it, won't, it won't save them. And then finally, under form um, for the defaults. Um, the settings apply to this form and new forms, and you'll have to decide in that list what you wanna do. You can change it so that you collect emails always. And then here is the one where you make questions required by default. You can make them all required by default so you don't have to keep checking that box every time. So those are the settings um, that are listed. And there is a list of those settings. Um, you'll have to go in and look at the individual pieces like I just showed you but at the bottom of page seven. All right, on page eight, um, the send option, because that's where we are. You are now done. You have made your form and you're ready to share it. All right, so um, I'm going to um, show you all of that. And I'm also gonna show you the, temp the palette. So let's go here to the palette. What if you'd like, would you like the header to be some other font than Roboto? You can pick from the list, recent ones I've used. You can change the font size here so that you don't have to keep doing that. 
Um, you can put an image in the header. You can make the color palette different. Mine is purple. You could make it red. Notice what happens if I make it red. Um, we often do that. Um, decide what you want your background to be. Because I chose red for my color, then it lets me choose a darker background um, or even darker. And you can choose that um, if you would like, or you can make the background white. Um, so keep that in mind. You could have one that fits your color palette that you've chosen. Notice questions is now in red instead of purple. Okay, um, that's number 20, um, all about the theme. And um, we're going to talk about this three dot menu next, and then finally the send. The three dot menu is listed on page eight in the left column. Notice the choices are pretty obvious. Do you wanna make a copy of this? Um, keep in mind that if you make a copy and change in the first version, it will not transfer to the second, but that's a good thing if you want your original to be preserved and maybe make changes to um, the new one. Move it to the trash. You don't want this form anymore. Um, get a pre-filled link or print it out. Um, add collaborators. It's a really good thing sometimes to collaborate with others. And so they will have special rights. They will be able to go in and edit and change questions or add more questions or whatever. Um, the script editor allows you to post um, a script on a web page that allows this to be edited there. And there are some add-ons. I suggest to you that one of the add-ons um, that a teacher might like is the fact that there's a math type. Um, option that lets you type math equations and problems using math symbols like square root and so forth. Um, math teachers um, that are doing quizzes will want that. There are many other add-ons and certainly if you want to see those add-ons, go see what those are and look at those. And then of course, do you want to use keyboard shortcuts um, like control copy, control paste, and there's a list of what those are. Okay, so those are the three dots. Now for the last, well, we have two more things to do. One is how do you send this out to people? And then number two, how do you view responses? So we're gonna click send. And when I click send, it gives me a window. Um, this is all written out in your handout on page nine. There are ways here in the middle. You notice it says send via. And do I wanna send it via an email? Do I want to send it via link? Do I want to send it in? I want some code that I can post on a web page so people can just click that code and go to this form. Um, do I want to post it via Facebook or do I want to post it via Twitter? I know, isn't Twitter called something else now? I obviously don't do Twitter, but I think it's called X or something. Anyway, you also get an option to collect email addresses on this form only. If you change the collection of email addresses in the settings, that will apply to all forms going forward. But if you just want to collect email addresses on this form, then you would change it here. Okay. And it will verify it as it would do if you changed it for all time. Notice if you are on email, then you've got to enter the names or the email addresses of those that you want to put in. You've got to include the title, which is already there. You can change it to something else, you know, add please complete or something. And then the message I've invited you to fill out this form and the link will be placed automatically for them to do that. Um, you can also include a copy of the form in the email. Um, however, um, I would suggest not. You can add an editor directly here rather than adding collaborators from um, the other menu that I showed you a minute ago. What if you want a, a link? So if I click here, now I have a link and I can copy that link or I can have it shorten the link. And if I shorten the link, look how short that is. Um, it takes up less space and it's less confusing. So you have that option. You can either use the full link or you can shorten the link, but whatever you choose, you can now copy it. And now you can paste it into an email and send it as part of a larger document. Um, and that's a great feature. We use that a lot. Um, you can use this to get text to embed in a website so that the form can be linked there. Keep in mind that anybody can get to the website. If anybody can get to the website, then they can do the link. And 
that's our options for sending. Okay, um, I copied that link. So if I want to paste that in somewhere, somebody could come and view this. And I may give you a give an option um, of an option to see this form as a completed form. I don't want responses, but I could do that. All right. Um, all of those things that I just said to you are listed on page nine of the handout. And I'll let you review that when you're ready to send. I wouldn't worry about it till you're ready to send it. And finally, how do you view responses? Well, we have a problem because uh, this form has not been shared and therefore we have no responses. So I can't click responses and get any. Notice it's still zero. So I'm gonna go to a form that I already have if I can find it. And I think it's right here. <laughs> Give, bear with me. Um, I had it as part of my most recent. Oh, let's see if I can do it this way. Form practice, form practice, recents. Here we go. This is a form that I did earlier. So I'm gonna open this with Google Forms. I don't wanna preview it, I wanna open it. Here is the edit page. Some of you may have been to this or or if you haven't and you're able, willing to help us with some tech things, please um, send me an email or look for this. Um, it's posted, I think, on the website. Not send me an email, I'll get it to you. So we have responses to this. And so when I click, here are the questions. If I wanted to edit these questions, I could, could notice I added a logo um, at the top of this form and here are check boxes. And uh, why are they check boxes? Well, we want multiple answers. Um, I don't think we didn't put any, we didn't put any radio buttons because we wanted multiple answers if possible. I did put a link. So if somebody wanted to look up the chapter map, they could to see what um, area of the state they're in. And then let's go to responses. So there are the responses. Um, there are nine people that responded. A summary means I get, if I go down through these questions, I see every question and every response. Now they're not tied. So I'd have to look, okay, the fourth one down here is the phone number for the fourth person here and the fourth person there. All right, what if I wanna see it by question? Well, then I can see, okay, here's all the people that answered number one by question and I can flip through those questions. And then finally, individuals, I can go through and here I happen to be the first responder. So this is my stuff. So I can see that the first responder gave me all of this and the second responder and the third and the fourth and so forth by clicking the little arrows. So you can view all of that here. If you want a spreadsheet where you can manipulate and put it in order and do some other things with it, you would go here, you would view it in sheets and over here, you get an option to download it as a CSV file, which is op you can open in Excel and do a lot of manipulation with it. Google Sheets, you can't do as much as you can in Excel. Um, you can print out all the responses. Keep in mind, more responses, more pages to print out, et cetera. Um, you can get email notifications um, for new responses. So I could ask, you know, if anybody, you know, we, we got these quite a while ago. And if I want to know, they'll send me an email response because I'm the owner of this that um, somebody else has responded. Um, and that's really nice if you want to keep track. Um, you can set a destination for the responses. There's all sorts of things you can do, but that's where you see responses. They're all in the same place as where the questions were. Um, and so you keep that link available. All right, so um, that's the video. I'm gonna stop sharing my page. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Jean. My last name is Talleen. My email address is jean.talleen at gmail.com. And you can certainly write me and ask for um, help um, if that's necessary. Uh, I'm not an expert in it all, but um, I enjoy learning along with teaching. So um, let me know if you have a question. Um, please make sure you download the handout, um, share it with your chapter members if they would like to um, learn more about Google Forms. Um, and thank you very much for joining us.